Without doubt, one of the most hyped cars of 2020 is the Toyota GR Yaris. So today, we are at AIC, where we're gonna put it on the hoist and take a closer look at this little hot hatch or wheel drive. Homologated for the World Rally Championship and led by rally legend Tommy Mackinnon, the new Toyota Yaris GR is a throwback to the 1990s era of lightweight, turbocharged all-wheel drives. Available in manual only, this is Toyota's first all-wheel drive performance car since the Celica GT4, which ceased production over 20 years ago. A unique engine choice, the Yaris GR is powered by a turbocharged three-cylinder, 1.6-litre engine producing 200 kilowatts and 360 newton meters. Coupled to an electronic variable full-time all-wheel drive system, enough to propel this little Toyota to 13 second quarter mile performance out of the box. We caught up with the team from the Automotive Innovation Center recently for a closer look at some of the finer points of the Yaris's design elements and where the aftermarket industry might develop future upgrades. Toyota Australia offered the Yaris at 40 grand drive away pricing for the first 1,000 online orders, which were snapped up inside of a week, highlighting the lack of choice when it comes to this segment. Word is the car is now sold out with the next allotment not coming until the second half of 2021. Luckily, we were able to secure one of these initial orders. If you're wondering who would spend this money on a Yaris, the only components this car shares with the regular grocery getter are the lights and side mirrors. Everything is bespoke to this car. We are in a Toyota Supra and we're driving to pick up another very cool Toyota. Yeah, we are. Yeah, sec I guess the second of the recent GR cars. Um, arguably more hot than the Supra. I guess it's a lot more affordable. Yeah, uh, a lot I'd more real. I'd have to agree with you on that. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, this Supra is an awesome car and we're lucky to have one. It's a quick car, but I think it's kind of plagued by the price point. But the, the Yaris, I mean, particularly the introductory price has been so cheap. I mean, sub forty thousand dollars and it it, yeah. it it sounds like it's going to be an awesome thing and we're going to go pick up a uh, a dealer demo because we haven't got our car yet um we've been a little bit um i think a lot of people are, are, are waiting yeah. on their cars from toyota um yeah. we hope to get it sooner but uh luckily our friendly toyota dealer at mentone mentone toyota have helped us and they're going to let us uh, take their dealer demo today you're with AIC, tell us a bit about AIC. All right, so we're the, uh, the Auto Innovation Centre, which we've called AIC because no one likes syllables. We've been spawned off from the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association. Our primary focus is a, it's a B2B business, assisting companies to develop accessories and products for uh, the Australian Automotive Aftermarket and international. Um, but at the moment our primary focus is supporting those companies by offering testing services, access to vehicles, access to data, 3D scanning, and, uh, and yeah, you know, we've been we're just about to have our first birthday, and we're really excited to you know really work with a lot of the big players in the Australian automotive industry. Mm. And uh, yeah, I guess we've got a nice workshop. And, yeah, uh, but some, yeah, as someone who goes into a lot of automotive workshops, yours is very nice. Yeah, got to try and keep it clean. When we get back, we'll stick it on the hoist, and we'll have a real good nose around. We can't do too much with this car uh, that we're getting because it's not ours. But when we get ours, we're going to do a full tear down. So. Uh, we'll talk about more about what we're going to do with that car when we get back to the workshop with our car. But today it's just a bit of a bit of a look see, but get right underneath it and get really close, as close as we can. Luke, moment of truth, do you think you're going to fit? Yeah, well, I don't fit in many cars. How so, tall are you? Uh, six foot seven or two hundred two centimeters. Yeah, so just the person the Yaris was designed around. Yeah, well, there's a lot of hype, a lot of talk about the height of the seat rails. So um, let's give it a go. All right. So usual position all the way down, all the way back. Oh. So my head's touching the roof, but that's not unusual. I'll do a bit of recline action, get my full hectic recline on. Bring this here. Next up. Yeah, it's not, it's not great, but I don't fit in most cars, so, yeah. you know, I'll make it work. All right, first step on every new Toyota. Speed limit settings. Here we go. Off, off, off. Now she won't annoy us. It's very positive, it makes a lot of noise. Like you can hear the linkages, but it's super positive, very tight. The bushings are really nice in there. All right, let's take it back to the workshop and put it in the air. It's got a nice head up display. Yeah. Really clear on a day today, which is very, very bright, bright and glary. Yeah. A lot of contrast. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull over so you can see it. 
Yeah, it's, it's really good from the driver's seat. Ah, hello. Race time. Looks like we have our first matchup. You better get a break in the traffic soon and it'll do a head gasket. It's got a cool boost gauge in the middle, look at that. That's all a... It's all LCD. LCD, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. How's the gearbox? It feels nice. It feels really Direct. nice. The shift is. It looks fairly short. The shift. Yeah, it is, and it's um, but it's light. Like it's it's not it's not making me work for it. I mean, my my road car's got a T56 in it, so yeah. I guess I'm easily impressed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's super tight and positive. No, it's it's nice, and that that IMT button, yeah, that's rev yeah. matching. Okay. So I'm not, um, You're not doing anything. I'm not, I'm just clutching and, and picking a gear and just okay. doing it all. I've seen a lot of people. So how could you pay 40 grand for a Yaris? And I pointed out to someone, do you know when the WRX came out in like 94, around 94? Equivalent money is like $82,000. Yeah, wow. In today's money. I mean, you, to get a decent car for 40, you're doing well. And this is, this is not a Yaris. I, I, I haven't looked underneath yet, but I don't, it's not really a Yaris, yeah? Like, it's a platform and it's kind of got the badge and some panels, but there's so much about it that looks like it's done, had a lot of work done, you know? Most most reviews I've seen said it doesn't do a whole lot under three. Two and a half thousand in fourth. Yeah. Yeah, it gets going. Yeah. It gets a rumble, yeah, doesn't know, it? Doesn't it? Roll into it in second. I, I want to see how it comes on. Yeah, three grand flat. Yeah, it's got quite a growl. It's uh, it sounds like a turbocharged uh, EcoTech. <laughs> <laughs> now, from what I've heard, not many have ordered in the red, but look, I like it. Yeah, it looks a bit nicer in the sun. It pops a bit. Absolutely. We we ordered a black one. Had to change it to white to make sure we got a mm -hmm. you know an early allocation. And there seems to be, I guess, more demand than Toyota anticipated. Yeah. Uh, but I, I love the red. I think it's a cool cool color. All right. So I think why don't we get it on some scales? I know they're rated at around twelve hundred and eighty kilos. But let's see realistically what it weighs. It's got a full tank of fuel. Absolutely brimmed. Like uh, yeah. what twenty k's ago? Mm -hmm. Just before, just when we picked it up. Uh, not many Ks on it, um, so yeah, it'll be a perfect test. Well, I've seen 1280 give or take 20 kilos, but yep. they're sort of advertising it at 1280 kilos. Yeah, well, we've got it on our um, vehicle scales, calibrated scales. We use them every day for testing. You know, absolutely unmodified, nothing missing, nothing added. So we'll see what it says. Well done, Toyota. <laughs> on the money. Well, wow, I've never seen that. Front right is 392 kilos, front left is 369, rear right is 261, rear left 258. 59% front, Yeah. so 59.5% front weight as it sits on its own. So um, I think if you sat a driver in it, probably it's pretty much smack bang in the middle of the wheelbase as well. Just under 59%, so uh, puts a bit more weight in the rear wheels when the seat's at the rearmost position. So mm -hmm. it's not bad though, it's like smack bang in the middle of the wheelbase. Luke, so I reckon we get it up in the air and have a look under this thing. Yeah, let's, let's put it over on the two poster and uh, see what's under it. Aluminium bonnet, it's nice and light. Yeah, so steel body and white. Um, front guard, surprisingly, is steel for hanging panels. You would have thought that if they're going to do doors in aluminium. Three cylinder, I don't know where they've pulled this from, where it's, if it's come out of a, another vehicle or not. Um, I know nothing about this engine. It's got a GR specific airbox. Spent a bit of money on the tooling there. Nice intake pipe, a little bit of... Um, over the loop and a cold air straight into it from the front. I'll tell you what, it's got a uh, quite a big intercooler on it. I believe in other markets they'll, they'll knock these out or there's an option to um, turn these into brake ducts. But we'll get it in the air, we'll be able to see that one. It's very wide, this car. Yeah, the guards are huge. I'm gonna get the top of the airbox off. I wanna see what this valve is down here. Yeah. It's got a small vacuum driven solenoid uh, and a diaphragm. So it's doing something. It could just be a resonator, um, but you know, it'd be good to have a look. They've gone a bit of effort with it. The induction noise does sound good, so it wouldn't surprise me if they've done some trickery there. For it's louder than I thought. Yeah. I heard, I don't know if this is true, someone told me it's got, in the car, you can change the, the volume of the induction. Bong dong dong. Now there's your air intake done. Look. <laughs> yeah. Dick. No, you've got to get some, uh, go to Bunnings, get some PVC. 
Well, this is, this is the airbox system, and this is your intake. So uh, this one sees straight out the front grill. Um, it's not particularly sealed. I mean, you can see it, it's open, but it's gathering the directed airflow um, through to the bottom of the airbox. Standard concept of a, you know, um, an injection molded airbox. A little bit of um, padding in here for noise attenuation to keep the NVH guys happy. Um, but interestingly, what it does have is it's got this uh, solenoid here, which is just a vacuum. Uh, it's a vacuum actuated um, uh, diaphragm with the, with the solenoid. So basically, the ECU can open and close it. And what it does is it sits. This is the underside of the airbox. Um, it just pulls this giant flap open. So two things there are either it's opening it just to get massive volumes of air in, but it does pull it directly from on the engine, so it's not going to be cold. Either that or maybe small animals might get in there, you need to get them that mount. I don't know, like the BMW M3 did back in the day. So you think under full throttle it's opening? I reckon they open that, I reckon it'll give you a, that, that awesome induction noise we heard. Yeah. But you, you could turn that into a cold air induction probably. Yeah, so. well yeah, the induction noise was quite, had a fair, fair growl, you couldn't really hear the exhaust. No, and that's good, you know, you yeah. want to hear this end, you don't want to hear know. what comes out the back. <laughs> so this must just be half of a Camry engine, I'm thinking. It's exactly what it is, I'm sure. I'll just cut it in half. I'm sure there's plenty of Camry parts in it. You know, plastic inlet manifold, pretty standard these days. Makes sense, they're lighter, they're better in almost every way. So yeah, standard Toyota badge, safety sense from Toyota. Pretty cool system to be fair. You can tell that it's basically like a, a gloss sort of mirror finish. It doesn't have any texture. So it's, um, it a radar lives behind there. Whereas the old school ones, you could see that it was like a, a textured kind of badge that was just plastic, whereas Almost every Toyota now, I think the, the aim of, that they're, they're going through with the safety sense is to have that radar system, which is great. I mean, you can't argue with the fact that like it has, you know, they're going towards pedestrian uh, recognition, car recognition. You might be distracted. You know, it might not be that you're at fault, but something you couldn't see and it breaks. And they're a great system. So they're on every Toyota now, I think. So um, becoming a bit more mainstream and sort of calibrating them as well. So, and there'll be a camera in the windscreen as well. That's a big exhaust. That's a big exhaust. Grab the verniers, bro. For a factory car? Why would you bother upgrading it? 70 millimetres outside. We don't talk Imperial here, so I'm not going to convert it. Two and three quarter inch? Yeah, but we don't talk Imperial. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, it gets smaller back here. Yeah. What have we got here? 60. Of the Japanese and their metric numbers, you can tell it's a nice performance car where the actual every exhaust tip is real. Mm -hmm. They haven't put a fake one in. It's actual pipes going into the uh, out of the muffler. Geez, they're big calipers. GR badges underneath the car. Dedication to branding that is. Score one marketing team. So that seems to point directly at the bottom flap of that airbox we saw. So while it's not completely joined, it does direct a lot of air into that space. So it probably is a performance benefit. And this one here, there's virtually nothing holding these in. You can actually see, if you get a shot of it, you see the light poke through. Yep. Yeah. So that, that comes into this void here behind the bumper and this triangle at the corner. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, I think, to a lot of packaging space there to put some brake ducts in, in, the, in there. Some more three banger things, I think. So standard sort of um, NVH padded, kind of like cardboard style under tray. It's not for going off road. Um, I think the WRC cars will update that, but um, you know, good for, good for aero. It's got this big thing here that's um, and it lives up in here, and this this device kind of lives in this space, and it just feels very NVH um, in this space. So a couple of things they've done to make it the three cylinder sound good. Or, hey, one or, thing I like about this already: look how easy it is to get that oil filter off. Yeah, it's cute too. The, the size of it, it's tiny. It's tiny. Ooh, it's not cold. Got the size of this sump. <laughs> Seriously, we need, a, we need to look up how much oil it takes. Has this thing got a dry sump or what? Oh. <laughs> Obviously not, but I mean, look at the size of that pan. What do we got? We've got a water, we've got a water cooler here. Yeah, that's tiny. Three cylinder life? Yeah. You guys have got all the good gadgets. 28 mil thick, it's pretty solid, but it's not solid, get it? Two piece. Two piece. <laughs> Aluminium center, riveted on. Bit Bottom. lighter. A lot of people do that these days, yeah, absolutely. Mm. 356 by 28 fronts and a heap of pad area. I'm going to call it that this is exactly the same part that comes off an FDR X7. Yeah. Exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, reasonable size. I mean, you don't want to have a tiny little pad on a massive rotor. There's not much point. I mean, I don't have the uh, standard kind of um, 
Like, I mean, it, you know, it's a Brembo kind of race style pad where they slide in, you've got a couple of pins. They're brilliant, they're so good. You can do a pad change just on the car like that. You know, you're talking 129 mil cross, you know, 56 and a half kind of in depth. So they're pretty meaty. Four big pistons. Like you said, one, the one letdown is the finish of these calipers. Yeah, I mean, you've got GR branding probably yeah. underneath the noise pad and they put it everywhere. Maybe that's I'm surprised a, they're not sort of painted like a gloss black or? That's their facelift update to show they've oh, done course, something. Yeah. You're going to do that later. $6,000 upgrade. Heaps of clearance in the rotor. Oh, yeah. Like heaps. In terms of the ball, you can see that there's a massive amount of ball clearance. There's a massive amount of clearance on the studs um, and no retention screw. So, you know, two piece rotors, a lot of growth, a lot of heat, heat growth with the aluminium um, possibly. But, you know, this, this is not a car that's for someone to drive to the shops for a nice MVH. This is designed to do stuff, yeah? I, I'm confident that when we take this to the track, which we will, uh, you know, it will work and you will not have brake fade or brake issues by the looks of it. Rear road is 297 by eight, 18 thick. Another healthy, healthy size of brake rotors for sure for a little car. Brake pad's a bit smaller, pretty standard for the rear. 71 mil pad across on the pad area, almost 47 radially. Pretty standard looking little pad there. So easy to change, just slide them in. It's beautiful, beautiful. What have you found here, Luke? Found this. So this is a, a lower arm here. Uh, and this is the one that's gonna take a lot of the cornering load, I guess the, the lateral cornering load. This looks like a spherical bearing. We're not gonna pull it out, um, but judging by the boots and the clips on it, I think that one's spherical, which means you, you're getting a really, really rigid link down here. Um, they've done that on sort of performance cars for a very long time, but it means that when you load it up, you're not gonna get you know, a whole lot of safety, you know, tow change or something like that. It's gonna do what you want it to do, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, reasonably confident looking at that, that there is a, a solid joint in that one, which is nice. There's been a lot of talk about the uh, diff, the rear diff, about what it is. So it looks like a, uh, I guess a traditional Haldex style. I'm sorry to disrespect the brands, but effectively I think they sort of were doing it commonly at first, whether you run a clutch in front of the diff. Um, still a standard open diff, so it's just as we've known it for a very long time. There's no science coming out of the diff, there's just a couple of CVs and drive shafts. Uh, but what they'll run in here is a wet clutch. Um, there's some connectors up here, which effectively the computer can control the amount of grip on those. So basically it just it changes the amount of um, torque you can put to the rear axle. They're always torque limited to some number, so you can't just go, you know, pull a fuse and, and go full rear wheel drive hectic skids. But you know, you'll have the ability to, um, you know, vary that. And I'm pretty sure they put that in their marketing material. But the thing is, you still have an open diff. So this only controls the amount that goes into the diff. Going out uh, is still an open diff, but it does have, um, I believe it's got torque vectoring by braking. They've got that in their marketing material, I think. So what that means is you turn into a corner and it breaks the inside wheel, helps introduce some yaw, get the car to go around the corner. And a uh, top spec model is going to come out with uh, Torsen, I think, inside there. So I've got a feeling there'll be a number of companies making upgraded discs for these things to uh, so. fill the market for people <coughs> wanting to step up. Since we've got the measuring sticks out. 65. Because metric runs the world. 18. 21.5 millimetres rear anti-roll bar. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all pressed steel control arm, so lower control arm and this um, trailing arm's all pressed steel. You got a steel lower link. I mean, look, it's not a... It's not Exotica, motor forged aluminium, but it's pretty cool. Like, it doesn't have to be necessarily. It's still a light car. It's gonna be good fun. 225s all round. I've seen a few photos already with 255s on these. We could try a set of wheels on it. What are the offsets? Yeah, it's right, PCD, 114. Is there much work putting this hoist in? 2.7 metre deep hole in the ground. Um, you can kind of see where it was. It was, you know, it's, it's the actual cassette. There's to put a metal cassette in and you pour concrete around it. You have to pour it in three stages because you pour it in one stage, it kind of bows in because it's just, but it's the cassettes, I don't know, it was 600 kilos or something. It's a heavy piece of steel, um, but it's got like 300 mil of concrete all around about 500 below it. And then, then the hoist just drops in the cassette ready made because they've sent, made the cassette. So it's pretty cool. Why did you go for that style and not the? Look, I, we wanted, we wanted two four posters and a two poster. Mm. Uh, the two poster, the idea was um, obviously we needed that functionality, but we said, well, what's the best out there? So we yeah. spoke to a number of companies and um, we're pretty close with any of the companies that have a presence in Australia and Maha does have a presence in Australia and um, they are really good to deal with and they've, they've, you know, they're, they're really happy to be a part of the facility. So, um, I mean, you can't get much better no. style of two posters than this. 18 by 
nine and a half, plus 38. They're a bit tight. They just want a bit more offset, I think. So the steering rack is super slender. So you can see it here, really tiny, beautiful thing. Just a tiny little shaft, tiny little gear rack in here. So it'll be electric power steer like most cars now, but they must be on the column. So a lot of, uh, a lot of cars kind of, they, they vary, but it seems to be more common that they'll run the electric assist on the attach the rack. This one appears as though it's probably up. If we pulled the column apart, you'd find it up in there. So they just kind of assist on the column, which makes it down here really cool. I mean, it doesn't take up much space at all, like you'd normally expect from either a hydraulic or an electric assist system. It's a decent sized pipe, uh, front section of the exhaust. Yeah, big cat at the top. So this looks like a pretty decent machine. Mate, it is, it is the decentest machine. Uh, yeah, all Hunter, um, it's a Hunter Hawkeye Elite wheel liner. They're basically 3D scanners and they're looking at the wheels. Uh, and basically what happens is you roll it forward and it gets the axis of the wheel. And unlike some other wheel liners, as you adjust it actually even updates its caster and everything, it's unreal. Um, it, it's a great, great wheel liner, repeatable results. So we love it. Burstons are one of the sponsors of the facility. So uh, we've got a lot of Hunter gear in here. Just on the phone to them then, because I said, got the new GR. They do have it, I just had to download the specs and it took a couple of minutes and here we are. So we're going to roll it on and see what it comes up as. I'm waiting for the theme of 2001 to come out of that. <laughs> <laughs> come up with front camber is, that's in minutes, not decimal. So it's about one and a half degree front camber, one and three quarter on the front right. It's got a fair bit of caster. It's got almost six degrees of caster on the left, a little bit less on the right. Um, you can see that it's actually demanding uh, less on the right. I oh, know it's even actually. Sometimes they demand more on the left for left for right-hand drive cars because of the road camber. But they're both slightly under spec. Um, but, but it does want to be you know up in that high, you know, close to six degrees, um, over six degrees of caster. And yeah, some nice safe two mil toe in on the front. Um, that's pretty close. I mean. Uh, for a wheel on it, that's not too bad. Be keen to see how much front camber you can get out of it. And on the rear axle, ooh, more camber on the rear. Is that more camber? What's in the front? One and a half, one and three quarter. So it's running uh, two degrees rear camber. It's got a lot of rear camber on it. Toe's a little bit whack. Thrust angle is pretty crazy actually, which is, which is interesting. And um, that's basically saying that uh, compared to where the four wheels are, it's, it's pointing, the rear axle's pointing uh, a little bit left. So, but anyway, the wheel alignment's done to compensate for that. So, and this is the adjustment. So, front toe adjustable is like normal with the rod ends. Um, camber does have some adjustment through the adjuster bolt there. No doubt someone's going to come out with something that'll give you a bit more. Uh, and the caster is not adjustable. The rear toe is factory adjustable. So, there is an adjuster on the back there that we saw earlier. Um, and obviously, you can't adjust the rear camber. At two degrees on the back is where she's going to be, which is a fair bit. Yeah. It's not bad. So, thanks to the Mentone Toyota, We've been able to have a bit of an overview of the uh, Toyota Yaris, but you guys have your own model coming. Give us a bit of a rundown of what you plan on doing with that. Yeah, well, we, uh, we buy all our Toyotas off Mentone Toyota. Um, same with the Supra and the Land Cruiser and the Hiluxes we've got. Um, they're doing their best to get us a car as quick as we can. Um, we're in the line like everybody else, but when we get it, the plan is to you know, go a bit more in depth to what we did today. So we'll be doing a full teardown, uh, basically as far as we need to go. Um, if we need to get, you know, we'll probably be scanning things for say lowered seat rails. That's a, that's a common issue that people are calling out for roll cages, um, brakes, br up, brake upgrades, performance pads and things like that. Um, if there's clutch, clutches will probably be something that we need to do. So the powertrain will come out, um, but we'll get right into it. Um, first thing we'll do is 3D scan it. Uh, we're going to do roll centers, center gravity heights, all that sort of stuff. We've got a lot of companies that make in Australia that make fantastic suspension. So we're going to be uh, helping those people develop products for it as well. Um, so yeah, first thing is probably going to roll it in way hours as well to see if it's 1280 on the nose and uh, start 3D scanning it. So more on this 3D scanning, do you want to run over that in a bit more detail? It's a, we use a couple of 3D scanners, they're metrology great and they give you absolutely unreal data and it, it allows you to, to design products and make sure that they're going to be absolutely perfect. So um, even the suspension companies in Australia, they're using 3D scan data to design their components to make sure that they're absolutely perfect and, and this is the best way to do it and we've got some of the best 3D scanning gear here. 